Hour number two on a Friday, Chris Brown, Steve Tasker with you, and we know what that means. It's time to bring in senior producer from NFL Films, also co-host of ESPN's NFL Matchup Show, the one and only Greg Cosell, whose weekly segment is presented by Scott Lawnyard, an official commercial site work partner of the Buffalo Bills. Greg, how you doing? Well, I'm sure just like you guys, a whole lot better now. Yeah, right. Great yeah. news on yeah, the Yeah, it really is. It, it is great news for us here. And uh, and we were talking just before we came on how proud we are of the organization, how they handled it. Um, and I think also for me, and I know they always get criticism, but the league at large handling it the way they did and, yeah. and in subsequent days and hours, uh, so I thought it was surprisingly empathetic. So, um Yes. And now this week, now that DeMar is doing very well, it's it seems uh, warranted and we're happy we all did it. So uh happy they did it that way. So I'm 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 no I don't miss the Bengals Bills game like I thought I might at one point. Uh, it didn't seem quite as important, you know. It certainly didn't. It certainly no. didn't. All right, so let let's try to shift gears here, Greg, and go to the game at hand. Uh, yeah. certainly we'll have a very inspired Bills team taking the field on Sunday against the Patriots. If there's one thing about the Patriots that is darn impressive, it is their eight non-offensive touchdowns, seven on the defensive yeah. side of the ball, including one again last week. Kyle Duggar, who had the 39-yard interception return, now has three defensive touchdowns for his team this season. I, I know you watch all the film. How much have they just been anticipatory in nature obviously sometimes you get passes bouncing off the hands of receivers and into the waiting arms of a defensive player um some of these though seem to be good anticipatory skills by this new england defense yeah i mean i think those are plays you have to look at brownie as individual plays i mean that particular play was a disguised coverage with a late movement a late rotation and uh, it ended up Duggar was on the line of scrimmage to start and it ended up being cover two. He ended up being the middle hall defender in cover two. And clearly Teddy Bridgewater did not process the coverage. So plays like that. And, and, and certainly a team does not do that every season. So that's why you kind of have to look at it as individual plays and see why they occur. You know, some some occur on tips. Um, so, you know, it, it, there's no answer as far as I'm concerned to that. You know, don't forget, as you guys know, and you're not forgetting, these teams played week 13 and right. Buffalo just controlled. Excuse, uh, yeah, Buffalo controlled the game. They ran 45 plays in the first half. Overall, they ran over 70. They had the ball for 38 minutes. They kind of lined up in that game, which does not usually happen against a New England team and said, we're physically better than you are on that side of the ball. And here we are. And you have to stop us. And they couldn't stop them. And that rarely happens against the New England defense. And you talk about this. The New England defense, statistically, you look at the rankings and the way they're as good as the Bills defense, statistically. I mean, they... they right. They, a little different in the points allowed at the bottom line. And third down efficiency, they're not quite as good as the Bills. But in every other category, they are at or just a hair better or right there with the Buffalo Bills, statistically. Offensively... When you look at these two teams, big difference. Bills are much yes. better and much more efficient offensively. And I think the key matchup looks like it's going to be Bills offense, Patriot defense, how that looks. And you said the Bills looked like they kind of just controlled the game. And I remember thinking the Bills, the Bills kind of just strangled the Patriots at the last second and, half of that game. And they also had a touchdown called back, as you recall, I'm sure, yep. with one of the Josh Allen plays when Sweeney was called for holding, one of those special Josh plays that was, right. I think, 40-plus yards. Um, right. But, you know, when that was the game, as you may recall, where they really whipped out the pony package, there were 13 snaps of the pony package in that game, and they haven't really used it to that degree since, and it was really effective and successful in that game against New England. Now, again, normally you don't do the same thing against the same opponent, you know, twice, especially in such a short period of time. It's not as if that game was week two or week three, but you never know. I mean, it's... You know, I, I imagine none of us have a real feel for, given the week, what Buffalo is going to do in this game. But, you know, they had 13 snaps with both Hines. Um, with Hines and Cook played 12 snaps with the Pony and Hines and Singleton one snap. And Cook had some really good runs out of the Pony package in that game. They ran the ball well. Um, so, 
we'll see what their approach is. Um, you know, the longest pass play in that game was 21 yards to Hines, and I think that happened on the first or second possession on a kind of a second reaction movement throw by Josh. So that was not really a big passing game. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure the Bills want to play that way generally. I think they're built a little more to sort of push the ball down the field at times and create some big plays offensively. But that game, look, they had a 15-play, 96-yard drive from the third quarter into the fourth quarter. That usually doesn't happen against New England. Right. Uh, what do you make of New England's defensive front? Because in the first meeting, um, Barmore was a still on injured reserve. He's back yeah. now. How much of an impact can he make in terms of changing the battle at the line of scrimmage, do you think? Well, he's got a lot of talent. I mean, he's a big kid. He's long. He's athletic. Um, you know, that's hard to know exactly how he'll impact the game, but he's he adds a good player to the mix, Brownie. So in an ideal world, you look at it and you say they'll be better in this game. You know, I guess my overall thought before we switch sides of the ball here is that I would be surprised if the game played out the same way. You know, I think that which doesn't mean Buffalo can't win the game. You know, <laughs> that's not my point at all. But I don't think it will be the same kind of game offensively. I think the Bills are going to need some big plays in the pass game, and I don't know if they'll control the ball quite the way they did. That, that, that to me, had a little bit of an aberration feel to it, an that's impressive also, feel to it, but not the way it, you know, I would think it would play out a second time. But that's kind of the way the Patriots like to play, though. They don't think you can go 15 plays and Correct. end up with a touchdown. They want. They kept the lid on the big plays. I mean, that's kind of the way they yep. played the Bills, like the Bills play the the Chiefs, right? Or the right, Dolphins. Right. They keep a lid on the. You know, make you go the long way, take the dink and dunk, and ma hope you get frustrated or just make a mistake. And that's kind of what it seemed like they were trying to do to the Bills. And I think that's one area where Josh Allen has really improved, Steve. I mean, there are times where I see him drop back, and I can tell immediately by the coverage the way they retreat, given the route concepts and combinations, that he knows he's not going to have a route down the field, and he throws it immediately to the running back, and he gets 9, 10, 12 yards. And those are good plays. They don't seem like much in the course of a game, as you know, because everybody's focused on explosives. But those are really positive plays. And why, you know, don't sit back in the pocket and wait for something that you know is not going to be there. Greg, the biggest probably dichotomy between these two teams is how good Buffalo's red zone defense has been of late and how awful New England's red zone offense has been. They are last huh. in the league in red zone touchdown efficiency. Is there a singular theme running through this season for the Patriots' offensive execution in the red zone that stands out well, to you? Let me expand that, Brownie, and talk overall about their offensive execution. Overall, it's been problematic. Um, what has surprised me tremendously, and I know there's a lot of talk in New England and maybe you know, throughout the media about – uh, you know, who's coaching the offense in New England and, you know, all that. I, you know, I don't get into that because I'm not in the meeting rooms. But one thing that's really surprised me watching their tape every single week is the number of basic route concepts and reads that Mac Jones has missed. I'm talking about basic stuff. You know, like if you call curl flat or slant flat to the boundary and you have to read the underneath defender, he's just throwing to the wrong guys. And and I'm really surprised by that. That is not a function of Matt Patricia. That's in that's day one, day two install stuff. And now I'm not saying he does that all the time. He has very good moments as well. But this offense with Mac Jones has missed a lot of things. And they have not been able to compensate for it with a consistent week to week run game. That, you know, and I think they felt going into this season that they'd have a bit of a two headed monster in Stevenson and Harris and a really good run game that they could hang their hat on every week, that that would be an identity thing. And it hasn't been there. I know Stevenson may get a, a thousand yards, but, you know, we play 17 games now. So a thousand yards isn't automatically a sign that you've had a great year. Um, but they just, Brownie, they have not been very good offensively at all. They don't hit explosives very often. They don't run the ball particularly well. They don't sustain offense very well. It, it's, it, quite frankly, at times been a hard offense to watch. Yeah, and we've, we've seen other um, media outlets, I mean, they're criticizing, and they say the same thing you do. They'll point out instances where the offensive line doesn't get a hat on a hat. 
Right. Um, yeah, that where they you know, the receivers you end up with three receivers banging into each other or running the same concept, and all of a sudden they're all three within three yards of each other or two right, guys. Right. Are, um, that to me reeks of coaching. It, um, and maybe it is. I, I'm not gonna like I said. I I know how hard I work, Steve, watching tape. So I know how hard coaches work, and right. I've always been in my career very leery of. of you know, ripping coaches, which is easy to do. Uh, and not you, I'm not talking about you personally, you played the game, so you know, but I, I just, you know, I, I'm never comfortable doing that because I always feel that you have to be there and be through the process to understand, is it the coach? Is it the players? Cause you know, Steve coaches coach, but once you step between the lines, the players play. So you could argue coaches have a lot of power, but they have no control because you guys play. Uh, you know, I mean, how many times wow. I, I know I've seen it here at films because we wire coaches and all that, you know, up in the press box, how mad they get because the, the players are not doing what clearly they're supposed to be doing. Right. So, you know, I don't know where that balance lies. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. It's not rocket science, but if you've got guys doing the wrong thing, it's because they haven't been taught to do the right thing. Um, certainly they can get beat physically. Right. And certainly right. there could be some a culture. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, jump through mental hoops here a little bit because there sure. might be a culture of a, uh, that has been pervasive in New England where they expect players to do certain things to get ready. And that culture may have shifted with Josh McDaniels exiting. Now you've got players who don't know they're supposed to do that themselves. They're supposed to learn something on them, their own. Uh, a lot of coaches say, hey, listen, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know. Some guys say, listen, you should know, you know, do this <laughs> in this way. And the player does it the wrong way or the way that right. didn't you and, know, and, with the wrong technique. And, I, and I've had these conversations with coaches over the years. And I think you would agree, you know, just because let's say you are a defensive coach and, and you have been your whole life or vice versa, doesn't mean, you know, the other side of the ball, you know, right. You know, the other side of the ball in a very general way, you know, I mean, everybody can go up on the board, defense, offense, and draw route combinations. That, that, that's, that doesn't mean, you know, how to coach a particular side of the ball, you know, and, right. and offensive coaches, guys who've been doing it ever since they got into coaching for 15, 20, 25, 30 years, you know, they're offensive coaches. If you've been an offensive coach and all of a sudden they tell you, Hey, go and be the linebacker coach you know, you got to learn how to do that. You don't just know that, you know, just because you might know how linebackers are supposed to react and cover three, that doesn't make you a linebackers coach. Right. Greg, another player who missed the first meeting between the Bills and Patriots was Damian Harris. Um, yep. He has historically been a Bills killer in three yeah. games against the Bills, 44 carries, 316 yards, an average of 7.2 per rush and five touchdowns how yeah. might he be able to diversify the Patriots run game yeah. knowing he's got a little more juice than Ramondre Stevenson I was just going to say that Brownie you 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 took the words right out of my mouth he's definitely got a more explosion and more juice than Stevenson um and he's just unfortunately been injured through much of his career but he's a guy that when he hits the hole he can get through a hole in confined space, and then he's got a reacceleration element that I don't quite think Stevenson has. Stevenson's a bigger back and maybe a more physical back, but I think that Harris has that reacceleration trait, which is so important. Um, and we've seen him do that. We saw him do that last year in that cold weather game. I remember. Um, I guess it was two years ago where he scored maybe a 25 yard touchdown or so against Buffalo. And he, you saw the juice. He can add a lot, you know, assuming they can get it all blocked up because that's been another issue. Their old line has not been, I think what they hoped it would be when the season started. All right. We're a little bit of a loss today is than we usually are because we don't have a bills game to review. Right. Right. See where they have if maybe it's, you know, steadily evolved to, but, you go back, what do you expect? You said this game might look a little different than the Bills running 45 plays in one half. Getting out. What, yeah. uh, still, this is a game that is going to be really emotionally charged. Sure. But X's and O's wise and maybe tactically wise, what's your best guess about how this game plays out and what the Patriots might want the Bills to do or try to force the Bills to do offensively and defensively? Well, I think you did hit it on the head earlier in the conversation, Steve. 
you know, Belichick is, he does not want to give up explosives. No coach does, but Belichick right. certainly. So the question becomes now, is he going to have bracket concepts versus digs? Because the reality is that there hasn't really been on a week to week basis. It's occurred at times a week to week basis. There hasn't been that second receiver that you say, wow, we know we, we can count on him. You know, even though it didn't work out in the first meeting, I think his approach, his approach tactically would be similar. Let's see if the Bills can go 15 plays in 96 yards. You know, let's see how that plays out. You know, and and the emotion part, none of us can answer that because we don't know. But, you know, the Bills, the Bills have been the best team in the NFL on third down. Um, they're close to 50 percent. They're number one in the league. In the first matchup, they were nine for 15 on third down conversions. They were three for three in the red zone scoring touchdowns. That was critical. You know, I, I think third down is really, really important. And this is going to be really important in this game. And Belichick, to me, just based on track record, he'll do something different on third down than he showed the Bills in the week 13 game. And then it'll be up to Josh and the receivers to be able to work through that in the you know brief time you get once the ball snapped uh so but i think overall he's he's going to think in terms of hey we're going to try to make them go 13 14 15 plays to score All right greg i know we addressed this prior to the first meeting between the bills and the patriots but the new england defensive staff has very effectively used josh uche as a situational pass rusher yes as a bookend yep. to judon I mean, this is a team that's now second in the league in sacks with 52. And yes. Uche, even though he's a situational guy, he's up to 11 and a half sacks this season. No. Can you just maybe spell out the way in which they're deploying those two in pass rush situations? Well, I'd say they're predominantly edge players, but not exclusively. And don't forget, in the first matchup, Deion Dawkins did not play. So he will play in this game because Quisenberry, as I recall, played left tackle in that Correct. first matchup. And, you know, obviously Dawkins is a better player. So, you know, but one thing about Belichick, he can be very, very multiple with his front looks given the down and distance situations and very multiple with his pressure concepts, which doesn't mean he's going to blitz a ton and rush five or six, although he can do that. But, you know, I think Uche and Judon both are guys you can – use as what we call jokers they can line up in different spots within the front six seven whatever the situation is and rush from you know different angles and you have to be prepared for that you know Uche is very good off the edge because he's shown both speed to power and he's shown the ability to to win you know on the high side clearing the arc and judon's just a really really good player you know overall i mean he's good against the run he's he's a good pass rusher so you know, you can't let these guys disrupt your passing game, especially when you get to third down, and there will be third downs. So, look, there were 15 of them in the first game. So there's going to be third downs, and you cannot let the pass rush disrupt um, your, your offense. Give us an idea of what you th how you think they'll handle Josh. I mean, I know they won't just spy him the whole game. They won't right. uh, rush three. There, and there'll be multiple, as you can say. But what about overall – who has had and what kind of strategy has been the most effective against Josh Allen, in your opinion? Well, they, they did spy him a bit in that first matchup. They used Bentley at times. I, I'm sure they'll do similar things depending on down and distance, Steve. Um, you know, I think the, the, the big thing, and, and look, we've seen the Bills have success doing this in various times with Josh being patient. But I think when all said and done, that's the approach you have to take. You do not want to give up big plays. It's as simple as that. You you can't do that. Um, so they'll do that, and they'll see if if they can pr make them have to go distance. Um, I'm curious to see what the Bills' approach is, Steve. That's the other factor. You know, will they come out and try to be aggressive throwing the football? Will they feel given the, the last game they played was was that the Bears game? What was the last game? Uh, the last that game was they the played last was, game. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, it's funny how you lose track of that. Um, you know, no, the Patriots um, just just got through with the – is that what you're talking about? No, he's talking about the no, last, the, the last Bills, Bills game. game. Yeah, the Bears game, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and obviously the Sorry. Bears do not have a good run defense, and that was a really strong rushing performance by uh, by the Bills. They had a very diverse run game, delayed draw, same side power. They ran a lot of different concepts. They were very successful. You know, the, and obviously the weather was a factor in that game as well. So that was not a game to really come and toss it all over the yard. Um, you know, I, the weather, from what I gather, is not going to be an issue this week at all. So, um, you know, what will the Bills' approach be? Will the Bills' approach be, hey, let's try to score early, get ahead, and make them have to throw, and then let our pass rush work against an O-line that has not really been that effective protecting the quarterback? So, I'm, um, you know, I'm very curious to see how the Bills come out because the, the Patriots, to me, if you get ahead 14-0, 17-3, I'm not sure they're built right now to really play that way. Yeah, I would, yeah, I think you're right. Greg, thanks right. as always thanks, for Greg. the insight. Enjoy the game on Sunday, and we'll catch up with you next week. It's playoff time. Uh, yes, it is. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend.